Today, after teasing that we're going to make a video talking about KVM for so long, we are finally doing it. This is the ultimate KVM starter pack video. And we're going to explain what a KVM is, how to use one, and why do you need a KVM. We're also going to talk about how you're going to choose the KVM for your own use case and the prerequisites that you need to take note of. Trust me, there are lots of types of KVMs and you will definitely need to take your time to find out which one suits you the best. And I believe that this video is going to be very long so I'm just going to be timestamping everything down in the comment section below and I'm going to take my own sweet time into explaining each and every part of this video. So let's begin. Starting off, we need to talk about keyboard, video, and mouse. If we string those words together and abbreviate them, then it becomes KVM. Why is the term called KVM then? Well, in short, in data centers in the past, there are racks of servers, and within each of those racks of servers, there are like many computers. So just imagine that every computer in that data center needs one keyboard, mouse, and monitor then you are definitely not going to have enough space for all of them. So to solve this issue, KVM modules are used. They consolidate all computers into a single set of keyboard, video, or monitor in this case, and mouse. Of course, you will still have to plug a cable for your display, PS2 for your keyboard and mouse. Remember, this is back in the days before USB keyboard and mouse were mainstream, and you have to plug each of them to the KVM module. And yes, your cable management is still gonna be hell because it looks like Medusa had a bad hair day but that's better than not having a KVM module and that is the basic idea of a KVM. But then KVM modules transition from data center servers into offices. There are some companies that require their employees to use more than just one computer so it's handy for them to have a KVM module so that you know it serves that purpose. It's the same basic idea, just in a different form factor, in a different place. Then KVM modules morph into something with a fancier design like a dock for your laptop. Yes, there are some laptop docks that connect via a single Thunderbolt cable from the KVM to the laptop and it provides video signal, monitor, USB ports for keyboard, mouse and everything else that you want to plug in and some even come with SD card reader, audio jack for your external speakers and even Ethernet port for MAC address pass-through for security purposes. Yeah, that, that's the best way to put it. And most of the time, that single cable will also provide charge to your laptop as well. For example, this KVM module that we are showing on the screen here technically has all of them and you can also switch between like two computers or three of them. So yes, these kind of products also exist. At the same time as KVM modules are evolving, monitors are evolving as well. Monitors started off as a basic device that just display visuals on the screen but then eventually they started to have more features and eventually more ports like a 3.5mm audio jack and also USB ports built in plus the recent development in monitor technology is adding USB-C and some amount of wattage to charge the connected device as well and I say connected device because technically you can plug in your phone like the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4 and then it also provides charge to your phone while you're able to use something like Samsung DeX. Then the next step these monitor manufacturers took was a brilliant one and I truly appreciate it. Since there are a lot of ports that are common between monitors and KVM modules, it just made sense to combine both of them into one single product. Hence, monitors with KVM switches were invented. Case in point, the Dell UltraSharp U4021QW that I've been using right here. We did a long-term review of this monitor recently so you can check it out at the top right corner there. And today, I'm just gonna talk about how I plan all my cable routes and plug everything including all my peripherals and not very peripheral kind of products like charging pads and whatnot into the monitor. And to do that, I will have to draw it out for you. Since I am using a laptop and a desktop with this monitor, I have to plan all my cables before doing anything. I'll share you my secret as well. First, you will need to know that it's best to just plug everything into the monitor so when you flick the switch to switch between your computers, all of the stuff that you're using on one single computer will just immediately switch to the other one. So I listed down all of the things that I am going to plug into the monitor. 
I have a total of 10 things that I need to plug in and use like my keyboard, mouse, microphone, capture card, Xbox controller wireless dongle, BenQ light bar for power, charging pad for my gaming controllers, charger for my smartwatch, a spare USB-A and a spare USB-C. Those spare ones in number 9 and 10 are for me to easily just plug things to transfer file and to test some stuff, you know, reviewer things. But that aside, it's absolutely clear as day that there are not enough ports on the monitor to accommodate what I want to do with it. So, you know what I did? I bought this stuff. A USB 3.0 hub. I got this in particular because all of them are 5 gigabits per second in speed and it also has one USB type A port that's pointing downwards so it's actually very useful. I eventually upgraded the power strip that's strapped underneath my table to a Targus one that has four USB type A ports for charging so I moved number seven and eight to that power strip as well. As for number five, I thought of directly plugging it into the monitor so that I can use the same Xbox One controller for both my PC and also MacBook Pro for gaming purposes. But unfortunately, it's just impossible since macOS does not support the Xbox wireless controller adapter and there's no third party drivers for it. So I just directly plug it into the desktop instead. And I also plug the audio jack from my speakers into the monitor directly so I can share this super speaker between two computers. And this is the Edifier S1000 Mark II by the way. So I connected all of my stuff as shown in the diagram on the screen here. Most of the things are connected directly to the monitor with two cables going from the PC desktop as in the DisplayPort cable and also a USB Type-B cable, uplink cable for the USB hub and one Thunderbolt 3 or 4 cable connected directly from the laptop to the monitor to get 90 watts of power for that laptop as well. And in terms of technology, I think this is just magnificent. This monitor has everything integrated and surprisingly, I use all of those features available except for the ethernet port since I need constant internet connection for both computers. And from what I can see, desktop monitors with integrated KVMs are pretty rare nowadays, but it's picking up in terms of pace. We have the aforementioned Dell UltraSharp U4021QW that I've been using for the past few months. It's super advanced and it was originally meant for enterprises, but somehow just matches the way how I use the two computers at home. And honestly, I think a lot of video editors will love this monitor as well. It's pricey, but since I use all of those features available, I think it is all right. But if you do need a monitor with an integrated KVM built in, but not with such an advanced feature, then you can also look at Gigabyte's catalog. They have an entire series of KVM monitors with varying degrees of sizes, resolutions, and refresh rate. However, Gigabyte is aiming towards the gaming KVM side, so they only are able to output 18 watts of power via the USB Type-C port. But Gigabyte is the only one who actually has a 34-inch ultrawide monitor with 3440 by 1440 pixels in resolution and it also has a built-in KVM that supports 144Hz and adaptive sync on both DisplayPort and Thunderbolt connections. We did a few reviews of Gigabyte's KVM monitors before, so I will link it at the top right corner there for you to check it out as well. So now we'll take a short break before we proceed to talk about how to actually choose the best KVM module for our own use cases. Welcome back. The question now is, what is actually meant by the perfect KVM module? Truth is, there's just no such thing as a perfect KVM module. You have to choose a proper KVM module depending on how you want to integrate it into your setup. However, in the sea of KVM modules, how do you even start to look for a KVM module? Well, to make it easy for you, I created a list of FAQs, frequently asked questions when it comes to deciding which KVM module you want to buy for your setup. So what you need to do is ask yourself these 10 questions. Number one, do you need video over USB Type-C and do you need to charge your laptop or not? Number two, do you need multi-monitor support? Number three, do you need DisplayPort and also does your laptop, for example, support that aforementioned DisplayPort version? For example, this is actually very crucial. The Dell U4021QW uses DisplayPort 1.4, but I have tested some laptop with Thunderbolt 3, but it only supports DisplayPort Out mode version 1.2. That means 
it's just not that compatible so you have to check that out for whatever reason laptop manufacturers do not write what type of display port out mode version that their laptop has even though it's just all usb type c or thunderbolt you have to confirm you have to double confirm triple check if not then you're just wasting money number four what's the maximum refresh rate do you need for your monitors number five do you need audio output over the kvm module number six usb ports do you need them and also how many do you actually need number seven the type of ports that you need usb a or usb c number eight the speed of the usb ports do you need just usb 2 or usb 3 and also do you need it in 5 gigabits per second or 10 gigabits per second or the newer ones are like what 40 gigabits 80 gigabits per second so you need to check that as well number nine ethernet with pass-through mac addresses this is something that is for security purposes i don't see home users needing this feature but maybe you're a high level exec and you need this kind of security features while working from home then you might want to look into a kvm module with this feature number 10 hdcp support now this last one is kind of up in the air because hdcp is technically drm for your video streaming services like netflix and whatnot so if your monitor doesn't support hdcp then you cannot watch netflix in high resolution as yeah, I think that's it. I don't quite remember the specifics, but HDCP is actually very important. So with all of those 10 questions answered, I have to admit that I have not found the perfect KVM module that supports all of the points listed above. If you have found a KVM module that has all of those features included, do let me know down in the comment section below because I would love to know which KVM module actually supports all of those features and what's the price. So for KVMs that meets the criteria number 2, 3 and 4, they are kind of extremely rare. That's all I'm going to say because most KVM modules are only supporting up to 60Hz only. There is also a specific variant of KVMs called KVMP which is made specifically for points 6, 7 and 8. The P here stands for peripherals and it is made to support to be you know, connected by a bunch of stuff. Granted, the fastest that I've seen so far is only at 10 gigabits per second for all of those ports. The one that suits my use case the most actually is this one. Now, it is technically kind of overkill as well, but uh, since I got this monitor, I didn't need to get those separate KVM modules. But if you don't want to deal with a physical KVM and you only need to use your secondary PC for short periods of time, then you can also consider getting software KVM. Yes, they exist. There are a bunch of software solutions available today. I think all of them are paid solutions and obviously you won't get a lot of benefits of a physical KVM and you need a stable and solid connection in your local area network for it to work properly. But honestly, I would also consider RDP as in remote desktop protocol like TeamViewer or even Chrome Remote Desktop to be a form of KVM as well. You see, you can remotely access and use your same keyboard mouse to control a remote computer. If you just need to control your second computer to just do simple tasks, then yeah, I would consider RDP to be a form of KVM, even though it's a very loose term, but you know, it works. And that's it. That's our beginner starter pack to know more about KVMs. I have not talked about many more details. For example, KVMP exists, but there's actually another one that's called KM only without the V. That means it's a USB switcher. Uh, yeah, there's just a lot of these kind of things going on. And then uh, if you remember last time, not last time, actually it's quite recent. We have those HDMI switches as well. Technically, they are a form of KVM but without the keyboard and mouse, so it's just a V. <laughs> That's how it works. You can integrate more features into the module to switch between two host devices or you can remove all of those features as well and leave just a HDMI switcher, USB switcher or whatever else. So, I hope you learned something. This video is kind of complicated it has a lot of technicalities in it but i hope you understand this video and if you have any questions do leave them down in the comment section below 
I'll be so happy to help you out to choose your own perfect KBM module.